Welcome. I realize I've been remiss and have missed some numbers in my suite of videos on divisibility rules. For example, I've done a video explaining the divisibility rule by 9 and by 3. I've done rule, one rule explaining the divisibility by 7 and another one by 11. I've even done divisibility rules for the numbers 19 and 17 and 51 and 147, all sorts of weird numbers. I've done divisibility rules on all straightforward numbers like 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Uh, there's still stuff to think about here, so it's worth going through them. So let me just finish up the videos on divisibility rules by going through the remaining numbers. Here goes. Uh, let's start with the number 1. It's fairly straightforward. Every number is divisible, is divisible by 1. So all numbers are divisible by... That's it. That's my divisibility rule. Everything works. All numbers divisible by 1. Straightforward. Great. Uh, next numbers. Let me lump together a rule for 2... 5 and 10. Now think about what you know. Most people say a number is divisible by 2. Its final digit is either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. That's how we identify even numbers. And most people realize that a number is divisible by 5 if and only if its final digit is either a 0 or a 5. And most people check divisible by, divisible by 10 by checking the final digit, seeing if it's a 0. So these three numbers seem to have the same rule. Check the final digit and then deduce something from that. So why would 2, 5, and 10 kind of follow the same divisibility rule of some sort? Let's do it. Let me focus on divisible by 2 first. I'll sort of do the exp explanation of all 3 in one hit. So any number like uh, you know, 6,847 can be thought of as a multiple of 10, 6,840, plus a single digit. And that single digit, of course, is the final digit of the number. And the nice thing about multiples of 10, in fact, let me make it explicit, 684 times 10 plus the final single digit, is that we know that 10 itself was already a multiple of 2. In fact, any multiple terms can be divisible by 2. So this part of the number is automatically divisible by 2. So the only thing we need to check is the final digit for divisibility by 2. All right, so which possible final digits are divisible by 2? Well, zero, if it's a 0 at the end, that'll be divisible by 2. Or 2 is a single digit divisible by 2. 4 is a single digit divisible by 2. So is 6. So is 8. By the way, 7 isn't. So it turns out 6, 8, 4, 7 is not a multiple of 2. But there it is. To check for divisible by 2, just check if the final digit is divisible by 2, or check if the final digit is one of these nice numbers we recognize. There's divisible by 2. Uh, by the same reason, thing, we can say if we want to check for div divisibility by 5, well, a multiple of 10 is already a multiple of 5, so that's taken care of. So all you have to do is check to see if the final digit is a multiple of 5. Well, then you think of two single digits they could be that are just multiples of 5, namely 0 and 5. They're the only two single digits that are multiples of 5. So to check if a number is divisible by 5, check if the final digit is a multiple of 5, that is, check if the final digit is a 0 or 5. By the way, 7 isn't, so 6,847 is not divisible by 5. But that explains divisible by 5 in general. And finally, divisible by 10, well, multiple of 10 is already a multiple of 10, so that part of the number is taken care of. All we need to check is the final digit. Is the final digit a multiple of 10? Well, it turns out there's only one possible final digit that is a multiple of 10, namely 0. So one way to check if a number is a multiple of 10 is check if the final digit happens to be 0 itself, the only option we have for divisible by 10. That explains divisible by 10. Great. Uh, let me move along. The number 4, divisible rule for 4, is actually going to follow a very similar principle. And most people, let's uh, clear some space here, most people know the rule for this. They say a number is divisible by 4 if its final two digits represent a number that is a multiple of 4. For example, if I did something like, I don't know, 5,972. They say is, look at the final two digits, 72, as its own number, and see if that's a multiple of 4. Well, a nice way to see something as a multiple of 4 is to ask if you can halve it a couple of times. I can halve it once and get 36. I can halve it again and get 18. Yep, I could halve it twice. That means 72 is a multiple of 4, which means apparently the original number is a multiple of 4. Why does that work? Well, they do the same sort of trick as we did before, this time focus on multiples of 100. Every number can be written as a multiple of 100 plus a final two digits. So this is 5,972 is really 5,900 plus 72. And to be clear, 5,900 is 59 times 100 plus 72. Well, 100 is already a multiple of 4. It's 4 times 25. And any multiple of 100 is therefore going to be taken care of as already a multiple of 4. No need to check this part of the number. So the only need to part of the number you need to check is the final two digits. So a number is divisible by 4. If its final two digits represent a number, that can be halved twice. Great. There's the divisibility rule for 4. In fact, in fact, in fact, let's go straight to 8 now. Because 8 and even 16 follow the same ideas. So divisible by 8 
people say is check the final three digits of number. For example, let's check, um, let me write a number like 18,276. This is a multiple of a thousand plus a final three digits. And why are people multiplying fast about a thousand this time? Well, this is really 18 times a thousand plus 276. And if you like, I can think of this as 18 times 10 times 10 times 10. Well, that's a multiple of two. That's got a two in it. This 10's got a two in it. And this 10 has a two in it. So 10 times 10 times 10 has a two times two times two in it. Namely, is a multiple of eight. So a thousand is already a multiple of eight. So that means to channel three digits. And can I, ask, can I divide 276 in half three times? Let's see, I bet I can. 138, that's once. Can I do it again? Uh, 65 plus 4, 69, that's twice. Can I do it again? Oh, nope. 276 is not divisible by 8, which means 18,276 is not divisible by 8. So the rule for divisible by 8 is just check the final three numbers of the number. If they can be halved thrice, then bingo, your original number was a multiple of, of 8. So that means the divisible rule by 16 is going to be very similar. Let me clear the screen. This time, focus on multiples of 10,000. I know, uh, making up a number. What's the Z762? Focus on the final four digits because the rest of it, oops, eight, uh, would be four zeros plus the final four digits, 762. That's really 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That has a two in it, 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 which means this was all a multiple of 16, which means all that's already a multiple of 16 taken care of. So all we need to check final four digits. Do they represent a number that's a multiple of 16? Can I have it once? Uh, four, oh gosh, maybe three, eight, one. Can I have it twice? Nope. This number's not a multiple of 16. And off we go. And then we get it divisibly by 32, check the final five digits. This is by 30, 64, check the final six digits, and so on. And then finally, finally, all these in-between numbers, like uh, 6 and 12 and 15, I don't know why I skipped 15, and 14, don't know why I skipped 14 just then, um, 6. Most people like to believe that prime numbers behave in a beautiful way, that if something is divisible by 2 and something is also divisible by 3, that guarantees it's divisible by 6. In which case, just use the divisibility rule for 2 and divisibility rule for 3. A number is divisible by six if its digits sum to multiple, th it is multiple three and its final digits either zero, two, four, six, or eight. A number is a multiple of 12, <coughs> excuse me, if it's divisible by three and it's divisible by four. People like to believe that numbers with no common factors behave that way. So it's digits, so a number is divisible by 12 is it, if its digits sum to multiple th of um, three and its final two digits can be halved twice. 15 is 3 times 5, a number is a multiple of 15, if it's a, sum, a digit sum to uh, a multiple of 3, and its final digit is either 0 or 5. And the zero rule for 45, which is 9 times 5, is digits need to sum to a multiple of 9, final digit needs to be a 0 or a 5, etc, etc, etc. That's it. We've now captured all divisibility rules for all numbers through all these videos. Ah, that may be a bit fast, but there we go. Now, the wonderful thing here, this is all based on 10. Base 10. The fact that 10 is divisible by 2 and 5 and 10 made the divisibility rules for these numbers 2, 5, and 10 kind of special. I happen to know that Martians have six fingers on two hands. So they're not like us. They're not very human. They didn't think 10 for their number systems. They think 12 for their number systems. So my puzzle for you as I leave off is, what would be the divisibility rules if all numbers were, worked, were, were um, written in base 12? And given that 12 is 3 times 4 and it's also equal to 12, I bet the divisibility rules for 3, 4, and 12 are very nice in the system. I bet the divisibility rules for other numbers are a bit awkward. How do you tell if a number is divisible by 5 in base 12? That's my real puzzle. If you work that out, things would be golden. All right, lots of fun. Thanks so much.